to be it today we're talking brake fluid and brake fluid contamination and i'm going to show you with just our basic tools how to check your brake fluid for contamination okay you're not going to need any strips you're not going to need any refractors or anything like that we're just taking a basic multimeter that shows voltage and we're testing the brake fluid for voltage yeah that's right i said testing brake fluid for voltage that sounds funny we don't think that we would have voltage running through the liquid part of our brake system, but through a process called galvanic reaction, uh, we can actually generate a voltage inside our brake fluid. So galvanic reaction is a reaction when brake fluid gets moisture in it. As we know, brake fluid is very hygroscopic and it pulls in moisture from the outside air. When it does that, the moisture mix with the brake fluid and it actually generates a small voltage okay so measuring that voltage is going to directly relate to how much water is in our brake fluid so the specification is three percent of our brake fluid cannot be more than water okay so if it goes over three percent then we're going to have a problem we need to change the brake fluid out replace the brake fluid with new brake fluid through a flush okay so because of that we can measure this through voltage. So 300 millivolts is going to equal 3% water in our brake fluid or 0.3 volts on your multimeter. So uh, I'm about to pop the hood and show you guys how to check this. Also, like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best in European automotive repair. Let's go ahead and get the hood popped. I'm gonna get my multimeter out. You just need a very cheap multimeter, $30, $40 multimeter to set voltage, set your black lead into the COM port, your red lead into the voltage port, and uh, pop the hood, take off your, uh, your master cylinder cap, and you'll be ready to test. So I'll meet you under the hood. Okay, so I have our hood popped here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is, of course, take my master cylinder cap off, take our sensor and everything out of the way. And you just wanna be able to access this hole right here for uh, the probe here. So I've got my snap-on meter here. Again, you do not have to use this big, you know, $700 meter. You can use a $30 meter and you're good to go. I'm setting it on voltage. This is an auto ranging meter. I'm going to set it on volts. That should be good there. And what I want to do is I want to take my red lead and put it inside the master cylinder and submerge the tip in the brake fluid. And then I'm going to put, let's see if I can get underneath here and get out of the way of the camera. I'm going to touch the master cylinder body and you'll see we're right on the edge we're 0.2726 or so for the millivolts so we're 256 millivolts 0.253 or 54 or so so that's telling me i'm going to be right on the edge if this was 0.3 or over then we are definitely going to uh have to flush the brakes out because there's too much water in the brakes. So um, again, red lead is going to be in the fluid. Uh, you know, if you if you don't if you've got really nice leads, you may want to change your leads out for some cheaper leads so you don't get brake fluid all over your leads. But and then the black lead is going to go on the master cylinder case. Uh, you know, I don't I don't want to ground this on the battery. I want to ground this directly on the master cylinder case and make sure that you know you're in a spot that the master cylinder is not painted or anything or not rusty or anything you want to make sure that you put that right on there and when you're able to do that then you get your reading and then that's going to determine what you do uh further okay so it's that simple it takes about 60 seconds to do okay so that was a really quick check of our brake fluid you can also use a test strip to check brake fluid i'll put a video up right there of the test strip video that i have using phoenix brake strips um, you know if you want to order those you can get those in a box you know of a, a hundred or you can get them just a couple at a time 
And uh, also, if you're finding out that you're close to that point three, which on this car I am, I'm gonna go ahead and flush the brakes on this car as well. But um, if you don't have a machine to flush the brakes yourself, I have another video of how you can make a brake flush or a brake bleed or a self bleeder for under a couple of bucks. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the description and I'm also gonna put that up here in the suggested videos as well. So uh, keep that in mind. If you're looking to do this in your driveway and you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money, you can go ahead and use that video and you can make your own tool. So also like the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell and you'll get a notification. Every time I make a video, I at least put out a video once a week. Um, so uh, I try to keep things topical and I try not to waste your guys' time, so get right to it. I don't have any intro music or anything like that. But also I'm working on something else. I'm working on a... Um, podcast that's coming out it'll be autocorrect with mr b podcast and as soon as i get that together i'm going to put that on all the videos as well for you to follow that as well so we're going to get we're going to talk a little bit about everything on that podcast so please stay tuned for that give me a comment down there in the comments and let me know if this worked for you let me know what uh, voltage that you got out of your brake fluids